Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Michael Edwards Show. Today, we are talking all about money, all about money. I love this topic so much. And by the end of today, you are going to feel more empowered around money and have some actionable takeaways that you can start implementing right now in your life to start rewriting your money story and make it an absolute romance. I knew that I had to make this episode when I was on TikTok the other day and this, I think he was a social media coach came up and he was saying, people don't want more money. People don't want money. They want more quality time with loved ones, more delicious food, more time to work on their health. And I was just like, what the fuck do you think money is? That's literally what money is. And it's funny because as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, well, that's why you're broke because you don't understand what money is. The people that understand the power and the value of money that's why they want money. More quality time with loved ones, more delicious, ex I was going to say more delicious experiences, more delicious food, more time to work on their health, better health. What do you think wealthy people spend their money on? They spend it on their health. They spend it on experiences. They buy their time back. That's literally what money is is. All of the things that you want freedom of, time freedom, location freedom, financial freedom, all the freedoms, they're bought by money. The idea of those two things being separate is the reason you don't have money. And by proxy, the reason that you don't have those things. Money literally equals the freedom to have all of those things. And people really struggle to understand this, but the idea of saying that money is separate from all of those things that we desire is like saying plants aren't all about the leaves. Can you imagine trees talking to shrubs or vines and being like, guys, it's not all about the leaves. We have branches too. We have trunks. We have roots. And it's like, yeah, but we also have leaves and those leaves go up in the sky with chlorophyll in them and absorb sunlight and turn it into energy and nourish the rest of our bodies. Just like for us, we direct our time, our energy, our choices, our genius into things that create money that is able to nourish us in our lives in the form of food, in the form of time, in the form of homes, in the for form of all of the things. That's literally what money is. Money is linked to survival and we don't want to be living in it in the survival frequency, although a lot of people do, but money is literally how we nourish our lives, how we nourish our bodies and how we nourish our souls. And money isn't this horrible thing that's been created by capitalism to keep us oppressed although it's used that way, but that's a use of money. That's not money itself. Money is a neutral energy. Money is just a currency that's used in exchange of value, right? And so once upon a time when we were tribal, we would have needed to accumulate resources in the, in the vein of food, shelter, medicine, right? And you would just have to barter with those things, right? You trade a sheep for wood or whatever. Now we have currency in place of that, but that doesn't make it bad. That makes it so much better because instead of trading sheep or whatever currency you would have had, you get to have money. And money is beautiful. Money gets to make money. Money gets to be easy. Money gets to nourish you. Money gets to be this wonderful thing in our lives when we have it. And this can be confusing because money itself is not inherently abundant. So a lot of the times we think that money is automatically abundance, but actually a lot of people that have made a lot of money have made it in a lack paradigm. This is one of the first paradoxes that I had to understand around this. And actually a lot of millionaires have money blocks. And this is because we can make a lot of money from a scarcity mindset. So we can think about this in terms of like a very kind of penny pinching energy, a very validation seeking energy. So in family systems, when we're growing up, there's these kind of four roles that we'll play. If we don't have this really nurturing, nourishing environment where we feel so loved and every single need that we have is met, which is pretty much everybody in the world or certainly in North America these days. So when we don't feel that kind of nourishment and love, instead of 
love, in the place of love, we seek validation. And we tend to do that in one of four ways. So the first is the hyperachiever. For this person, worthiness and validation gets linked to success. So it's the person who gets rewarded for getting good grades. I'm this person. So I was always rewarded for being really smart, for being really bright. That's when I was celebrated. I had four syllable words like hypothetical when I was four years old. And that was really rewarded for that. And I didn't get a lot of attention the rest of the time. So I became the hyperachiever. What I learned that my worthiness and my validation was linked to success and linked to achievement. Now, the other roles that we can play are the carer, which is people that learn to get validation for taking care of people. This is someone who's often had to become a, a kind of a parental role too early in childhood. And they are that person that kind of has no boundaries and is a people pleaser and is always giving, giving, giving into the point of resentment until their cup is empty. The sick or the victim, this person gets validation from being sick. So this oftentimes happens when someone doesn't kind of get any the care or attention that they're seeking, except for when something's wrong with them. And so they recognize, oh, when I'm in pain or when I'm suffering, I get attention. That can be in the form of love or maybe it can be the person that when you make financial mistakes, your parents bail you out. So some people are trained to go into suffering around money because they were always bailed out when they were younger. And so unconsciously, that's how their mind thinks that they solve money problems. And finally is the rebel. So this person got often negative reinforcement, but it was the only attention that they got. So I often think about this as kind of the family where maybe there's already a couple of siblings, maybe they've got an aunt and uncle and they've got kids too. And this is maybe a youngest child and the house and the family is really busy and there's a lot going on. And this child just never feels seen. They don't get seen for being brilliant. They don't get seen for being sick. They don't get seen for being in care. And so the only thing they get seen for is being rebellious. So this is the person that maybe, you know, says something really inappropriate at the table. And the grandma says, you can't say that. And then all the attention is on them. And it's negative attention, but negative attention to the unconscious is better than no attention. It's the same person that maybe they learn like when they break a vase or something when they're young. Again, negative attention is attention and we're looking for attention is what the unconscious mind thinks. And so as this person grows, they might be someone who does a lot of rebellious things. They might get a lot of tattoos, get into drinking, get into drugs, because they've learned that by breaking the rules and going against the grain, that's how they get validated. Even though it's consciously doesn't make sense, unconsciously to the unconscious mind, it's like we're looking for attention. We're looking for validation. So a lot of my clients and a lot of millionaires are the hyperachiever where they've linked worthiness to success. So there's this chasing of money and success in this feeling of need for validation. And this can be very unconscious, but some of the telltale signs are that they flit from one achievement to the other. And it's kind of like they get to something and then there's the accomplishment, they get the high of it for just a moment, and then it feels empty. And then they're on to the next achievement. And these people often actually suffer from a lot of low self-esteem on the outside. They often appear very, very confident. They often have a lot of vibrato because they've had to learn that to play that role of being the hyperachiever. But on the inside, they often have a lot of low self-esteem, a lot of low self-worth, and their achievements feel very hollow. And they can have these moments where they'll have a loved one reflect back to them, look at everything you've done. And they're like, oh yeah, I guess I have done a lot. But in the moment, they, they it's almost like they don't remember that. It's almost like they've forgotten every bit of success and every bit of achievement that they've ever had. And so if money comes into this formula for the hyperachiever, they often make a lot of money because their worthiness gets attached to the money. And so they're not actually chasing money, they're chasing love. So they might have a lot of money, although they have this feeling of hollowness around money. And so we often might see that and feel that energetically. We might not consciously really understand what's going on, but we might feel that energetically and feel like something's off and associate that as inherently being what money is. But that's not what money is. That's just money made in a lack paradigm. Money made in an abundant paradigm is like the most beautiful thing in the world. It's like life force energy and love shrouding you. I remember the first time I had over $100,000 in my bank account, and it was like I had this golden shroud around me. It was like I felt like I could do anything. I felt like I was free, like free in ways that it's hard to describe. I And of course, $100,000 really isn't that much money. There's a lot of things that are cost a lot more than $100,000, but that was a huge 
level of expansion for me. And it just gave me this sense of freedom, this sense of satisfaction, and this sense of possibilities. And people will often say things like money can't buy happiness, but those people often have a deep misunderstanding of money. And I'll prove this to you right now. So if you imagine that happiness, that things that where you're happy that you don't need money, money doesn't buy happiness. So just put yourself there, put yourself in that scene, in that moment where you, where there's no money and you're overflowing with happiness. Just let yourself see that scene in your mind where there's just pure happiness and it has nothing to do with money. Now, where are you? Are you inside or are you outside? Because if you're inside, how do, how is that home acquired? How is that structure acquired? How is that venue acquired? It's probably paid for. Are you eating something? You're probably eating something. How is that food paid for? Really resistant people right now are going to be like, oh, it's from the farm, right? Where did that food come from that you're eating in that, in that scene that you're seeing? Are you naked in the forest? Probably not. Where did those clothes come from? They were paid for. So it's not true that money doesn't buy happiness because when there's no money, you're in survival. You're naked in the woods living off of nothing. And you can even go to this extreme and be like, well, you know, maybe I'm someone that lives in a hut and lives off the land, but there's still things that you have to purchase like medicine, like metal, like tools. You just can't live off of nothing. Maybe there's a few people with extreme survival skills, but for the general thing, that's not going to be the case. And so the whole idea that money and that money isn't inherently happiness and you can have a lot of money and be really miserable, but those two things aren't in direct correlation either. The whole idea of those things being in a binary is a complete misunderstanding of what money actually is. So I didn't know when I had my big influx of money, I didn't know about the second fear around money. Okay. So there's three major fears that we have to overcome around money. So the first one is just the fear that we can never have it. Okay. So this keeps us in a lag paradigm. It's what most people live in poverty consciousness. It's everywhere you go to the grocery store and people are talking about inflation and the stock market and the economy and just all these limiting things and the price of grapes. And it's just lack frequency is everywhere. So the first thing we have to get out of is this belief and this fear and this lack frequency that we can never have wealth. So that's the first thing that we get through. Then the second fear around wealth is that we're going to lose it all. And so for a lot of people, what happens is they get it and they didn't even know about the second fear because that didn't even get triggered. And then that gets triggered. And then all of a sudden, now there's this fear and this worry, I'm going to lose it all. I'm going to lose it all. And of course, that's a point of attraction, right? That's coding your energy field, you're practicing a vibration. And the thought, what if I lose it all? And the action that follows that, taking action to not lose it, is all coded to the frequency of losing it. So inevitably what happens a lot of the time is people lose the money. I think it's, I can't remember the statistic, it's incredibly high, something like 90% or more of millionaires are broke again within two years of winning the lottery because they didn't change their money story, they didn't change their paradigm around money, and they didn't change their frequency around money. And they also probably didn't learn the, the financial intelligence but the financial intelligence is the surface thing. The energy underneath it is far more important. The financial intelligence will come as a byproduct of being in this frequency around money. And so that was definitely something that came up for me. And I'm actually going to do a whole episode about my whole story with my rise and my downfall and then my rise again with money and abundance and how that all played out in my life. But I'm not going to do, go into that today because that's not the intention of this one. But just knowing that that is a second fear around money. And if we practice that vibration of worry, we will lose it. We will we will limit our ability to grow. And then the third fear that gets triggered around money, and this comes much later, is the fear that we will never truly know who loves us because we are afraid that they're there for the money. And this actually only happens again if we build wealth and we don't work on all this emotional intelligence and inner work stuff. But let's say we became a multimillionaire in the in the hyperachiever paradigm where we're looking for it from a place of lack. Let's say we didn't build the emotional skills around it. Let's say we didn't have Michael to put us in our authentic power and become internally defined around how we hold money. Then we might be in this situation where we have all of these vulnerabilities and we're matching, we're an energetic match for the wrong people for the wrong reasons. And we have this fear that we don't actually know if the people in our life are the are in our life for the right reason. And this can be in a really extreme thing where people will 
will do kind of crazy things where they'll either blow up relationships or they'll blow up their financial situation because unconsciously, again, once this comes into the awareness, the belief becomes, well, if I didn't have all this money, then I'll know who actually loves me. And of course, that's not the truth. That's not reality at all. That is not a paradigm or reality that we need to live in. That's just a limiting belief and some stuff that needs to be shifted in our energy field. I actually had a client in one of my spaces recently, and she was talking about how she was working through some of this. And she was talking about going to hotels and putting herself in that environment. And she was saying that she was having a conversation with another mentor about that. And she said, the funny thing is, I would totally do that now if I had the money. But when I had the money, I didn't do that because I was afraid of losing it. And I was like, whoa, 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 pause. Can we go back? Because that was a key piece of your story. And she said, what, what, what? He said, when you had the money, you didn't do the things because you were afraid of losing it. And now you don't have the money. You literally manifested this experience from the vibration that you practiced. And it was like, you could see these aha moments on everyone's faces. It was a group call. And that's how it works. We so often miss this in our stories, but this is what we do. It doesn't even matter. It is, and, and so we're talking about, you just have to get on this frequency now and really understand you getting on this frequency of abundance and living in it. Not in the floofy way people talk about on TikTok, not about the Instagram coach, like a really deeply understanding what the frequency abundance, your specific frequency of abundance looks looks like for you getting on that frequency, living on that frequency, being disciplined about your thoughts, about your emotions, about your actions, about every single thing and making a decision and a commitment to live on that frequency. And that will change your reality. And she was like, so it, it doesn't matter what money I have in my, you know, the physical experience. I said, no, of course not. You got on the frequency of lack when you had the money and then manifested the lack. So you can definitely get yourself on the frequency of abundance and manifest the money when you don't have the abundance. It's it. That's how it works. It has nothing to do with what's in the material world. It has everything to do with the frequency that you're on. And so you've got to ask yourself all the time, what vibration am I practicing? What vibration am I practicing? What vibration am I practicing? I constantly hear it in people's stories. I had this other client in another space and she had a lot of like fear stuff from when she was younger, a lot of feelings of unsafety, a lot of this kind of, I don't even know that I want to say victim consciousness because it really was just this fear in her body that was very prevalent. And so we worked through that and we worked through that and she has a service-based business. And so she's been taking on clients, taking on clients and it's been going good. I think she's been having about two new clients a week. And then one week she had four clients and she came in and she said to me, Ooh, I have four clients. What if I can't handle this? What if it's too much? What if something goes wrong? And that call wasn't about that. So I didn't catch it at the time, but I remember thinking after the call, ooh, that's going to be a problem. I'm going to have to talk to her about that. And lo and behold, two weeks later, she came in and she said, I don't have any clients. Oh my goodness. I don't know what's going on. And I said, well, of course, because what vibration were you practicing last week? I have four clients. I don't know if I can handle it. What if it's too much? What's the vibration? I don't know if I want clients. What's the message that I'm sending with my energy? No more clients, no more clients. I'm literally practicing the vibration of no more clients. Two weeks later, no more clients. Of course, that's what happened because that's what you practiced. It's really that simple. We just have to be really disciplined about what it is that we're practicing. And so she's a regular client of mine. So I gave her a, a real stern talking to. We have a lot of truth bombs in my world. We do not coddle. The more I do this, the more we do not mince feelings, the more I recognize that compassion is really having hard, hard conversations and reflecting back deep truths to people. And so she heard me and she's a very good client and she's a very, very smart lady. So she went and she got herself back on that frequency of abundance. And then she thought, ah, there's this wealthy area I can go to. So she went to this this wealthy area, this is so genius, by the way, put on some kind of event and got a bunch of very affluent clients. And then a couple of weeks after that, she was in my world celebrating that she bought a Mercedes. So clearly things are going very well. And that shift happened in a matter of six weeks. And this is the thing when we really
really, truly do this work and change our frequency around money and really, truly practice it, make the decision to change and live in our personal abundant frequency. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that about the, at the end of this episode. Your life and your reality can change like that in no time at all. I've seen it happen. It's happened for me. It's happened for so many people. It is incredible how quickly things can shift. And again, we can have these seasons of our life where we get this and we're prosperous and we're abundant. We move into this thing and then we hit this season of lack. I don't know why it happens. It's I guess it's the upward spiral of ascension, but we kind of run into these areas in life where suddenly we kind of hit a roadblock and now it feels sticky and now it feels hard. And I had the codes before, but now this much feels like too much or not possible. It just brings up new stuff in our mind and in our in new blocks and new things get triggered in us when we expand. And that's the invitation. Life is always inviting us to grow, make different choices and become this next level version of ourselves. But the speed at which we do that can, you know, it can be a decade or it can be a week. It's the choice is really up to you how supported you are and how intentional you want to be. I was listening to some of my very successful multi-million dollar business owner friends. They have a national, I think, it's national, maybe international company. And they were talking about some of their next level goals and some of the expansion that they want to move into. And I was listening to them talk about the money and I could feel it. I was like, ooh, when you talk about that money and when you talk about some of these perceived barriers, it's very heavy. And so again, I was like, these millionaires have money blocks. Money blocks can be hiding anywhere. Just because someone has money does not mean that they have money blocks. And it's funny because I used to be so triggered by the lack frequency because it was my biggest biggest thing. Healing money wounds has been the greatest journey of my life. I was born to be a millionaire, but I was born into so much lack and scarcity and not even a financial lack. Like we were middle class, but the the lack energy. And again, I'm going to do a whole episode about that in my life and everything that I've been through and all the ups and downs, but, but it's been a huge thing for me. And so it used to be very triggering. And then I realized that it's actually one of the secrets to my gift, because as I've cracked this, I've realized, oh, I'm actually so sensitive to the vibrations around money and around wealth. And it's kind of like when we recognize that we have the gift of empathy, that often feels like a curse because it's this... I just take on everyone else's energy. So if people have anxiety or people are stressed, then I become anxious or stressed. But then when you understand how to work with empathy and experience it as a gift, it's like you can sense what people are feeling, but you don't have to take it on. It's like you become internally defined and there's an energy within you instead of an emptiness within you. And so instead of you taking on everything that you can sense with your empathy, you're aware of your emotional state and you're aware of their emotional state and you're aware of the contrast. And that's kind of what's happened for me with money stuff and lack and abundance frequencies is I'm a detector. I can feel the difference and people's, the nuance in people's vibration and their frequency around money, but without taking it on now that I've elevated my own frequency and created a lot of resource and awareness around that. So it's actually really fun for me to help people and call them into that abundant version of themselves. And it took me so long to own this, but I love money. I love money. So what are some actionable steps that you can take? Here are three actionable steps that you can start taking today to rewire your money story and change your frequency around money. So number one, we do not say I can't afford it. We do not ever use that as an excuse. And this is such an easy go-to excuse because it's the easiest thing to say when you're saying no to someone, when you're saying no to a purchase, whether you actually can't afford it or you just know that. But when we say this, we disempower ourselves around money. And when we don't have the money, we think the fact that we can't afford everything we want is a symptom of lack, but it's not actually. You can never afford everything that you want. And the, in fact, the more money that you have, the more options that you have. So the more things you have to say no to. If you have a million dollars, you can say yes to a lot more things, but there are a lot more things that you could buy and you could spend a million dollars like that. There are a lot of things that cost a million dollars. There's a lot of things that cost a hundred million dollars. There's jets that cost like $55 million, right? So 
it's not true that you'll be able to just have whatever you want when you have a million dollars. People that have more money actually have to practice more restraint because there's more things that they could buy. But that's what wealthy people understand is that the power around money is in having it, not in spending it. That's why it's called buying power. The power is in all the things that I could buy, but not that I buy all the things that I could have, then I would have no money. And when we have no money and we believe if we had all the money, then we could just buy whatever we wanted. That's why we have no money because we don't understand the power of money is in the having of it and in the buying power, not in the spending and the all of it. So we have to change our empowered relationship with not spending money. And every time you don't spend money, it has to come from a place of power. So it can't be, oh, I can't afford this. It's got to be, I could afford this. Or maybe you physically couldn't, but it doesn't matter. What you say is, I'm choosing not to purchase this. I'm choosing in my power to prioritize this and not that, or not to spend money, that, whatever it is, and to hold the maturity and the self-respect around that to say, I am practicing restraint around money. You want to be able to spread and you want to have this flow, but you also want to have restraint. I call this the king and the queen energy. Think about it in the terms of a kingdom. The king builds the kingdom. The king understands that there's got to be enough resource in the war chest, in the treasure treasure troves for the winter, right? And so if the queen who amplifies the frequency of regality, of royalty, is like, honey, I we want I want to decorate all of the doors in gold filigree. And the king is like, no, we have to feed our people for the winter. And we also have to be able to pay the army in case the northern border is invaded. The king understands that re the power is in having the resource, right? The queen wants to spend it, but the queen is an amplifier. So those two energies work together. And that's the masculine and the feminine, right? The masculine creates security and understands it in the practical. The feminine amplifies. That's why in feminine business, a lot of the time, we can create 10x, 100x, just incredible results. But without the masculine structure, it's not consistent. It doesn't stay. And there's often a lot of other problems that come in. So if we're not in a business relationship, where we have a king and a queen, a masculine and a feminine holding those paradigms, then we have to find the balance and the harmony of those energies within ourselves. That was a little bit extra on this piece, so I digress. But the key here is to always make money decisions from a place of power. So if you're going to spend the money, spend it from a place of power. And if you're not going to spend the money, you never say, I can't afford it. You never practice the vibration of being disempowered around money. You never practice the vibration of I can't afford things. You say, I'm saying no from a place of power. I'm practicing restraint from a place of power. And you start building that relationship with being empowered around money. Number two, a lot of people will just talk about the frequency of abundance. That is an abstract thing. It's an abstract concept. It's an abstract frequency. You have to actually know what a frequency is to tune into it. So our bodies, our beings, our nervous systems, we are like radio receivers and we receive frequencies. We receive consciousness, but we actually have to know what frequency that we're tuning into to find the frequency. And so if I were to tell you right now to tune into the frequency of love, depending on how much awareness you have, you would be able to tune into something, but because you know what love is, you have a roadmap, you have a model for what love is. If I were to ask you to tune into the frequency of like hate or abandonment or something, you would be able to tune into that to the degree which you know what that is. And so it's the same thing with the frequency of abundance. We've got to actually identify what that frequency is. Just like in the olden days, when you drove into a town and you could spend all this time like going through the radio dials and sometimes there's a button that could scan and try to find the station. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. It was very hit or miss, but eventually you would go past a sign and it would say, all of the radio stations on the side of the road and it would be like, oh, 101.9, that's the pop station or that's the news station or whatever. And then you can tune your radio dial to 101.9 and there it is. It's the same thing with these frequencies. We can't just tune into these abstract frequencies. We've got to actually figure out what's there. And we're not trying to tune into someone else's frequency of abundance. We're trying to tune into our frequency of abundance. So here's your exercise. Imagine the amount that you 
want to have monthly and now double that and double it again until you get butterflies in your stomach and it feels scary and exciting. And now go through and say, okay, I'm making this much money per month. What am I doing? What am I wearing? What am I doing differently? What am I spending it on? How am I thinking? How am I behaving? How am I keeping my space? All of these things. And then you go through and you start tuning into that and you start thinking about that, speaking about that in the present. You can do affirmations. I am so happy now that I have $20,000 a month and I XXX, whatever the things are. And that's your frequency of abundance. All the things that you would be doing, not what other people do, not what you think abundance is, what you would be doing in your life of abundance and you start living that as though it's now and every little thing on that list that you can do you start doing so i'll give you an example this was the thing for me when i experienced a big dip in my business and my sales and i went into major contraction around money and i went into scarcity i stopped doing all of these all of these things i, I this energy came in and it was almost like I had to punish myself back into being successful. And so whereas before I would wake up in the morning and I would meditate and I would work out and I'd often take my dog, I would go down to this little coffee shop in the building that I would live and chat with the owners. And then I would take my dog for a walk wherever I felt like going. And then I would get to my work day and I stopped doing that. And I just, it was like, wake up and work. And if I still have to take my dog to a walk, but I just take him to the same park every time, just get coffee from the same place, no adventure, no spontaneity because I'm in scarcity and I have to work. I wasn't obviously thinking those thoughts, but that was the energy around it. And when I started to map out my paradigm around money and around abundance, it was like, oh, I do all these things. I go to the waterfront. And it's so funny because I've been visiting my mom in this town on Vancouver Island where my perception was that there's just no abundance. There's just a lot of lack, a lot of scarcity. She lives in not the nicest area. And so I just had this belief that there was no, nothing here, no affluence, no bougie places. And I really love aesthetic. Look at me, look at my space. I love aesthetic. I love when people are well-dressed. I love, you know, being in Europe, in Australia. It was one of my favorite things, being in Sydney, the way people dress. It just oh, it makes me so happy to go to a beautiful place with beautifully dressed, stylish people. And so I had this belief that that just doesn't exist here. This whole town is covered in poverty mindset and there's just none of that anywhere. But lo and behold, as I start to shift my frequency into my frequency of abundance and connect to who I am in that frequency, one Sunday morning, I just woke up and I went to go to Starbucks and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the waterfront. I haven't been to the waterfront forever. And I took my dog to the waterfront and we walked along to this little coffee shop that we found. And I'm looking around and I suddenly realized all of these people are dressed really beautifully. There's lots of men wearing collared shirts. There's lots of ladies wearing nice outfits and dresses. Like people have scarves on, people look put together. Suddenly noticing that there's these white railings and there's the ocean and there's these docks and there's yachts all lined up. And in this town, that I've been visiting on and off for a couple of months now that I believed was just all lack, I suddenly saw abundance everywhere. But I got there by getting myself onto the frequency of abundance. And then it just happened. I just suddenly was in this place. I suddenly was in this place, having a completely different experience where I believed that was not available to me. And my intention when I went there was to go and journal. And I went and journaled and you know wrote a bunch of things down for my business. And let me tell you, all those business ideas that got journaled that day were winning ideas that were on the frequency of abundance as I and as I've implemented them they have continued to take me more and more into that frequency and bring more and more result that's how it works so you've got to figure out what your frequency of abundance looks like and start living like you're already on it start living like you're on it start acting like you're on it start feeling like you're on it that's how you get there just saying I'm prosperous I'm but rich I'm a millionaire it's not enough those thoughts are too abstract. It's not enough for you to connect to. It's got to connect to your mind, but more importantly, it's got to connect to your energy and your emotional body. You've got to get all of your being, all of your energy field moving and flowing and into attunement like the radio dial with that frequency. That's how we get ourselves into the frequency of abundance, into 
our frequency of abundance. So ask yourself, who are you? What are you doing? How are you thinking? How is your life different when you're on that frequency and start living that today? And it's going to be difficult. It's going to take a lot of discipline and a lot of decision, but do it. And I have a three-part masterclass series specifically on mapping this out if you need help with that. It's called The Paradigm Shift. And number three is to start making decisions. Okay. So lack consciousness waits for the circumstances to be right and then takes action. Prosperity consciousness makes the decision and makes it happen. So my friend Danielle Amos taught me this is that money goes where there's a pathway for it. So you have to take action. So what this might look like is I actually just said this to a lady. She was like, oh, I'm setting the intention to work with you privately in the future. I was like, that's great. Intention's great, but the pathway is created by action. So why don't you put it in your calendar in 30 days, you're going to have the money and call it in. And I said to her as well, and don't just call in the money because we're over having just enough. So call in double what you want so that you can have that thing. And so some other things are when I was doing this in the paradigm shift in this masterclass, I was talking to people I was like, well, what are you doing? What are you doing on this frequency of abundance? <laughs> traveling. People ask, well, what a lot of people say, okay, traveling, traveling where? Okay, I'm traveling to Bali. Okay, what hotel? Oh, I don't know. That's the problem. That's why the, the money can't come until there's a pathway for it. So let's start looking at hotels. Are you going to work when you're in Bali? Yeah. Okay, so let's start calling the hotels and asking them if they have good internet. Let's start looking at dates. Let's start looking at prices. Let's, if there's hotel things that we can reserve and that don't require a deposit and with a cancellation fee that's free, let's start booking them. Let's just do it. Let's start telling ourselves, telling our subconscious, telling our energy, telling the universe that we're going, we're actually going to Bali. We're actually going on this trip, right? Otherwise it's just in a wish. It's just in the frequency of wish. The universe doesn't respond to the frequency of wish. The universe responds to decision and action, decisive action, inspired action. The universe responds to decisions and actions. So show yourself and show the universe that you're serious by making a decision and backing it up with action. If there is, this was something for me is I am always talking about live events, but then it was like, oh, I'm waiting for the money until whatever, whatever. And I was like, I could just do it right now. And so I wrote some of the, I'm actually just realizing that I still haven't heard back from them, the scoundrels, but I wrote a bunch of venues and was like, hi, what are the details? I want to rent this space out and, or collaborate on an event. And so now I'm taking action. Now I'm telling myself, I'm serious about this. I'm actually taking steps in the direction of your goal. My, my, one of my mentors, Marissa Pierre, used to always say this, you must take one step in the direction of your goals every single day. And that couldn't be more true with money as well. You've got to start signaling to yourself, to your own subconscious, to the universe, to your energy, that you are serious as you make these decisions and you take steps in the direction of your goals. So, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was valuable. I would love if you would leave us a review or leave a comment. Let me know how you enjoyed this. Let me know what your biggest takeaway was. If you know someone that would find a lot of value in this, please share this with us. It really helps my podcast and my channel grow and it would mean the world to me. And finally, if you are interested in going more into this work and doing reprogramming around your money store and your energy field around wealth and abundance, then definitely check out my links. I've got different things going on all the time at different price points and there's always different places that you can come in and I have lots of free content as well. I'm really invested in making more and more free content all the time. So I really appreciate you spending this time with me. Thank you for joining me today. Remember that you are prosperous, that you are abundant, that money gets to be this beautiful, wonderful experience in your life. My name is Michael Edwards. I'm sending you so much love and bye for now.